I've always loved watching speedrunning. It's so fascinating to see the games that took me so long to beat, broken and beaten in just a few hours or sometimes even a few minutes. HDQ was definitely what got me and I know many others into speedrunning. I mean, what better than coupling speedrunning with raising over a million dollars for cancer research? Recently, the runner R. White Goose was banned from attending this event. Why? For holding extremist political opinions. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've seen what has happened. Essentially, an outrage mob tweeted out images of him saying unethical things. HGDQ responded by looking into these claims and banning him. I won't talk about Graviton or any other speedrunners who have been banned for similar reasons in this video, because my opinion would be the same for almost every case. Now, before we get into the meat of this, let me tell you that I have no direct relationship with any of these speedrunners. I had never even heard of Goose before all of this happened, and am no way defending his political beliefs. But my beliefs on free speech trump any sort of extremist ideas you could spout with said free speech. HDQ has set up a situation where you either have to support an extremist or a group of extremists. One who has said questionable things or a group who wants to ban such people. Let's take a look into this first post. Antifa Andrea, the tweeter, says that Goose is a Nazi. Some of the reasons for this include posting videos of Jordan Peterson and spewing hateful anti-woman propaganda. So what is actually going on here? Goose does link a Jordan Peterson video, but is this evidence that he is some sort of extremist? Peterson has over 1.7 million YouTube subscribers. Are all of these people Nazis? I could go on a 20 minute rant proving that every claim made about Peterson's Nazism is taken out of context or it's just a complete misrepresentation of what he said. But if you really want to see how much of a non-extremist he is, just watch his content rather than relying on others to tell you what positions he represents. The next thing Goose does is to post hateful anti-women propaganda. Nothing he says here is anti-women, but yes, he does misrepresent the video a little. Peterson does explain the underrepresentation of women in high paying jobs. This is due to what he argues is the correct decision made by women to forego the money to work less hours and to live a balanced life. $250,000 a year, $300,000 a year, $500 an hour. Okay, what's your life like? You work all the time, period. He says this is due to men having less trade agreeableness. Goose says it's due to women being less competitive, which there is mild evidence of, but it's not stated in the video. As an aside, Antifa Andrea is reading this post as if being less competitive is bad. That's never what Goose says. The last thing here is a dog whistle about Jews being a weaker race. This is probably just a joke, but there is reasonable doubt based on the next few posts. Overall, Antifa Andrea says that all of these things paint Goose as a Nazi, but the only evidence of any sort of Nazism is a dog whistle about Jews, which she doesn't even directly acknowledge or point out. In the next few posts, there were some very extremist views held by many of the alt-right, such as the faded Jewish question, wanting to establish an ethno-state, or generalizing about women in his discord. And yes, I cannot provide any backing for many of the claims he made, because they are baseless. The problem is, though, who determines what claims are baseless? There's no set line for AGDQ that determines what the runners can and cannot say. Many are saying that this ban was to make AGDQ look better, but what kind of precedent does this set for the organization? Since they looked into Goose's history, that means that they will have to look into every single runner's history to see if they had said anything that would make the event look bad. That's what they would do if they wanted fair treatment for all runners, at least. This is not what they are doing, and I guarantee that they would find dirt if they looked into all of the 100 plus runners attending the event. Show me the man, and I'll find you the crime. Instead, HEDQ is only caving into the outrage mob, a vocal minority of people who want others with wrong think to be censored. But these people are never happy. There is no satisfaction in getting people banned. I mean, all they got was Goose's insincere apology and one less speedrunner. And the biggest question is, who's next? Is it anyone who likes Jordan Peterson? People who believe in gender differences? 
To Antifa Andrea, these sorts of things are worth tweeting at AGDQ for. I'm afraid they will come after people like me. Anyone that is to the right of Joseph Stalin. And what about those communists? Would this outrage mob like that? Andrea does claim to be part of Antifa, a state-declared terrorist organization of anarcho-communists. I would argue that they have even more destructive opinions than people on the alt-right. What I'm getting at here is that... If I had any personal gripe with any of the speedrunners attending the event, I could look into their history, try to find something that they said in the past, and do a hit piece on them and tweet it at AGDQ to get them banned. I know for a fact that there are more people that agree with the principle of free speech than there are those who care about someone from the alt-right participating in the event. This is why this is a bad business decision for AGDQ. I will not watch any of their events this year due to this dangerous precedent. Many others won't too. We will instead tune into ESA, the other speedrunning event that won't cave into outrage mobs. I agree that the principle of the First Amendment should be carried over to business, that's why I'm making the video, but it isn't the law. People are technically right when they say AGDQ can ban anyone they want. But this is just under the law and provides no justification for the organization's action. If I were running AGDQ, I would impose no regulation on what the runners could or could not say, but as you might know, I'm not in charge. I'll settle for a middle ground where AGDQ can maintain their family friendliness while keeping regulation that is clearly defined and enforceable. What I propose is to only regulate the event. AGDQ shouldn't be the big brother looking into everything each speedrunner has said in the past. Ignore all the people that say it makes you look bad. It doesn't. If something happens at the event, that specifically goes against the rules set beforehand, punishment is a viable option. And Goose Caves in 2, the apology was insincere and it only drew people away from him. Not only that, but it acknowledged that the mob was right in his eyes. It wasn't. No one in the mob was satisfied by it either. His political opinions can't just change because people are angry. I hope he doesn't continue to let them and HGTQ roll over him for the sake of other runners and the community at large.